Hello everyone, we are going to find the region uh, that lies inside both the circle and then the limousine. This is the region that we are talking about. First, we need to determine which one is the limousine, which one is the circle. And as we, um, let's say we plug in data equals zero, which is um, starting from the positive x-axis right here. If data is equal to zero, when we put in zero in here, cosine is what? Cosine of zero is one. So one times 10, we get 10 right here. And then the other one is when we plug in zero here, we are going to get one. So six minus two, we are going to get four. Which one is larger? Which one is larger here? The 10 is larger and then the four is smaller. So we know that this would be the circle and then the, the y curve would be the limousin. Okay, so let's just label them first. Okay, so we have r equals 10 cosine theta. So that's our circle right here. And then the other one is actually just the y curve, right? The blue curve is the circle. And then the y curve is the 6 minus 2 cosine theta. Okay, so first, oh, actually, what I'm going to do is that I will need to label it right here. Okay, yeah. So what we are going to do is that we need to think about how to find the area, the uh, overlapping region right here. Um, what we can do is that we see that this is um, symmetric, right? So that we can actually just find the area above the x-axis and then we can just double it and then we can get the area for the total region, right? For the whole region. And so how do we find the area for um, just the, this portion above the x-axis? This is the region that we're talking about right here. So, so we need to find this region right here. How do we find this region? Um, this region is actually bounded by the x-axis and then the two curves. It's not just bounded by one curve. So we actually need to use both functions to set up the integral to find the area. So the first thing that we need to do right now is that we are going to find the area that's going from here. So let me set that up right now. Okay, so I'm going to start drawing a ray from the origin. And then I'm going to hit the intersection of the two curves right here. And what I want to do right now is that I am going to find the area. I'm going to find the area. Um, that's bound up by the green ray and then the Y curve and then the X axis. So I want to find this area first. And then I'm just going to call this area, um, I'm just going to call this area A1, okay? And the question is, how do we find this area? Um, to find this area, we first need to determine the point of intersection or we need to determine what angle um, will shoot the ray, right? So um, we know that we are we rotate it. Let's say we, we start with the x-axis and then we need to rotate the ray, do some angle so that we can shoot at um, this direction that's actually crossing their intersection. So how do we do that? We actually need to do it by setting the uh, how the two curves equal to each other. So that's how we are going to do it. Okay, so first what we are doing is that we are going to set the two curves. So six minus two cosine data here, we are finding the intersection and then we are setting it equal to the blue curve, which is uh, the 10 cosine data here. Okay, so now we just need to solve this equation for the intersection. How do we solve this equation for the intersection? We can isolate the cosine, so add the two cosine. So we are going to get six is equal to 12 cosine data here. And then isolating the cosine, we actually will have cosine data is equal to one over two. And then from there, we know that this this angle is in quadrant one, right? So we have an angle that's in quadrant one and cosine is equal to one over two. What is that angle? That's pi over three. Uh, so cosine of pi over three is equal to one over two. So the angle is 60 degree. Okay, yeah. So now we can start setting up the integral for this orange region right here. So let's do that. So first we are going to um, just write down the formula. We are going to go from zero to pi over three. 
okay? So um, how do we know that it's going from zero to pi over three? It's really because we start from zero here and then we start tracing out the curve, right? We sweep out this angle here and then we are going to get the area for this region here until we hit the pi over three and then we stop there. And so we are going to get the pi over three right here. Yeah, so let me label that in the same color. And then now what is the integrand? The integrand is our usual formula for finding the area inside the polar curve. So we have one over two and then R square. Okay, and then D theta. Okay, so now what? Um, the R is actually, which ones do we use? We actually need to use the Y curve because that's the curve that's bound in this region. Um, this region actually has nothing to do with the blue curve, so we do not need to worry about the blue curve. And so what we are going to do is that we are going to go from 0 to pi over 3. Okay, 1 over 2 times, what is that? The R is the, um, the Y curve, right? So we have 6 minus 2 cosine data. And then D data. Okay. And then, um, of course, we would need to expand this one, right? There is a square on the outside. We cannot integrate this thing directly. So we need to expand. And we are going to get, what, 0 to pi over 3, and then the 1 over 2. And then we are going to get, let's see, so expanding it, we get a square the first turn, which will give us 36. And then we need to multiply the first turn, the second turn, and then double it, right? So we are going to get 2 times 6 is, what, 12? We get minus 24 because we got to double it. And then we are going to get cosine data right here. And then plus, what is that uh, square the second turn right here? We are going to get positive 4 cosine squared data. D data. Okay, so that looks like it's a lot of work. Let's continue. Um, we can actually multiply, distribute the one half to all those turns in there so that we don't get um, the, per, uh, the fraction anymore. So we are going to get 18 minus 12 cosine data. And then I really actually just want to use the half, half angle formula at the same time. So I'm going to get what? One half times four is going to give us a two, right? But then you know that the half angle formula, we need to recall that first. The half angle formula, I think I need more space. So let me put the intersection on the side. And then I need the half angle formula, which is right here. Uh, let's just recall it here, which is what? If I have cosine square data that's going to give me one over two and then one plus cosine two data and so i just want to point out right here is that there was a four in front of the um, the cosine square so i'm actually just going to get four cosine square data right and then if i multiply the left side by four i'm going to multiply the right side by four so i'm going to get what, two times one plus cosine data. And then we can make this substitution there. Okay, so make this substitution over here. Then we are going to be getting what? There is still a one half times whatever that you are gonna get here. Okay, so this thing right here, this thing right here, is going to be what? Two times one plus cosine of two data. And so when we distribute the one half with this two, it's going to cancel them. So we are going to be just getting, what is that? That's just plus one plus cosine of two data. Okay, let's continue. So we are going to be getting what? Um, 0 to pi over 3, and then we have 19 minus 12 cosine data, and then plus cosine of 2 data, d data. And then now we can integrate each turn directly. So we are going to be getting what? What is that? Um, we're going to be getting 19 data, and then minus 12 sine data. 
and then plus one over two sine of two data. Uh, the one over two came from reversing the chain rule because there was the two data inside the cosine function. We integrate. Okay, so we are going to be evaluating that from zero to pi over three. And so we are going to be getting what? Um, plugging the pi over three first, we are going to be getting 19 pi over three. And then um, minus. Uh, plugging the pi over 3 into the data right here, we are going to get radical 3 over 2 and then times the negative 12, which will give us uh, minus radi 6 radical 3 and then plus. Let's see. So we plug in the pi over 3 in here, 2 pi over 3. That's um, sine of 2 pi over 3. That's also giving us radical 3 over 2. So we're going get, to be getting radical 3 over 4. So we have radical three over four right here. And then if you plug in the zero, that's zero, that's zero, that's zero. So we do not need to write it. And then actually those two does not involve a pi. We can actually put them together, which will give us um, 19 pi over three. And then we have what? Minus 23 radical three over four. Um, yeah, so we are really just getting the common denominator and then we can combine them together. Okay, so that's a lot of work. And I even skipped some steps and it still feels like it's a lot of work. But then anyway, so we got the area for just this orange region right here. We need to find this tiny area right here, tiny the area for this tiny region here. What is that region? Now this time it's, this region is bounded by the green ray, the blue curve, and then, yeah, well, just that's it, right? So we are going to find the area right now. So it's this region that we are trying to find the area of. And we are going to call this one A2. And how do we find this one? We got to use the blue curve. And as you see here, it has nothing to do with the white curve, right? So we do not need to worry about the white curve. So now let's set up our integral. So now we know that we start, right? This is actually the lower bound for this region. As we trace out the blue curve, we start from this pi over three right here. So our lower limit will actually be pi over three. And then my upper limit will actually be half of that circle. But we know that the domain for this uh, 10 cosine data is actually going from zero to pi. We actually can trace out the whole circle um, by just going from zero to pi. So this is half of that circle. This is the semicircle. So we are going to end at pi over two. Okay, so pi over two is our upper limit for the integral. And then of course we are going to just set up our integral right here. It's one half r square again, the same formula. This time the r is going to be different. It's not the same r as that r. What is this r then? This r is actually the blue curve. So we need to put in the blue curve into this r right here. So we are getting pi over three to pi over two. So we have one half. And then now what is that blue curve? It's the circle, right? The 10 cosine data here. And then square d data. Okay, this one, um, it feels better because it's, you do not have a binomial in there, right? You do not have two turns in there so that you're not squaring it. Okay, so that's really just if you're just treating um, cosine data, right? As just one single function, we do have just one single function here, but there are two functions there, including the six, right? The six, we treat it as a constant function. So we are getting what we are getting, um, one over two, and then we are getting, what is that? That's going to be 100, right? We got to square the 10 and then square the cosine. So we get cosine data, d data here. Okay, so simplifying the integral, we are going to be getting, we're going to be getting what, 50 and then cosine squared data, d data. Just continue, right? Just continue. Half angle formula, just like before. Um, this time we have the 50, right? But then you know that it's going to be multiplied with a one half. So we are going to be getting just the 25, right? Because you got to multiply by that half. And then we are getting the one plus cosine two data in there. Okay. 
Okay, and then now what? We can start integrating directly. Yes, we can integrate. So we are going to be getting 25. And then the one becomes a data when you integrate. And then you are going to get one half sine of two data right here. And then you evaluate it from pi over three to pi over two. Okay, so now we can start substituting the numbers in there. We have 25. And then what is that? Uh, pi over two, right? We plug in the pi over two into the data here and then plug in the pi over two, we are gonna get two times pi over two. That's just pi, sine of pi is zero. So we don't need to really worry about it, but then I'm still just gonna write it down right here. And then now start subtracting. We plug in the pi over three in there. So we are gonna get, be getting pi over three and then plus. And then if you plug in the pi over three in here, you get two pi over three. Sine of two pi over three is radical three over two, which is uh, being multiplied by the one half. So we are going to be getting radical three over four. And so the rest is really just simplifying work. Um, so we get 25 times, what is that? That's pi over two minus pi over three. That um, you don't need to worry about getting the common denominator. You can just think in terms of degree, which will help you figure out the answer really quickly. This is 90 degree minus 60 degree. So you get a 30 degree, which is pi over six. See that that's actually easier. Okay, now we have minus radical three over four. And then you can distribute the 25. So you're gonna get 25 pi over six minus uh, 25 radical three over, what is that, four? Okay, yes. Okay, so it feels like it's done with the problem, but then remember that we are finding the area also including the, the region at the bottom, right below the x-axis. So we need to do what? We need to sum up those two areas, the orange region and then the red region. You sum them up and then what happens? You are going to double it and that will give us the total area. So that's what we want to do here. So eventually we are going to be getting what? Let's just use the green color right here. So the total area is actually equal to twice, right? You're going to double the area of the orange region plus the area of the, uh, the red region, right? And then don't forget that there should be a pair of parentheses right here. And so what do we get here? We have two times, what is that? That's going to be um, 19 pi over three minus 20, no, that's not 24, that's 23 radical three over four. Okay, and then plus 25 pi over six minus 25 uh, radical three over four. And then, so what do we get here? We have two times um, 21 pi, right? It's 21 pi over um, two. Um, what you need to do is to get the common denominator and then combine those two and then you get a reduce because it, as you can see here it's not in the denominator of six anymore. I actually did some reduction and then uh, minus what is that the 12 radical three. And so yeah, how do we get 12? It's really because of the 23 and the 25. You add them together because they're both minus, right? They both have a minus sign. So you combine those two numbers. We get, we're going to be getting what? 48, right? 48 divided by four, it's going to be 12. So you get this. And then don't forget to distribute the two. So you get the final answer, which is the what? Um, 21 pi minus 24 radical three. And that will be our final answer. Yeah, so this problem, um, we need to break this region into two smaller regions and then we need to set up an integral for the area for each of the two regions. And then eventually we just add them together and then double it. Okay, so that's it for this problem. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, give me a comment, and then also please check out my other videos. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time.